now return to Primetime Texas. Now, of course, as any true Texan knows, Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys put a distinctive stamp on country music. Now another group has come along which is just as distinctive. Their sound is as clear as a cloudless sky, as crisp as a winter morning. The Dixie Chicks are redefining people's expectations of country music, not only by their sound, but by who's singing it. Primetime Texas producer Jesus Hernandez and photographer Pete McKeeman found out it all started with a puppy. <laughs> One of the first members of the band, uh, she had a dog. I thought I was going to have puppies, and I said, oh, I want a puppy. And, and uh, so we'd go over there and we'd play with the dogs until they were weaned, and we'd sit around and jam in the, in the living room. And I guess Katie's almost five, so it'd be about five years. Emily must have been a sophomore in high school. I was finishing my freshman year of college. With her, lights, buzzers, whistles, and bells. I love Laura's voice. She's got you spinning round in circles, I can tell. We used to go to festivals all the time where we'd see Laura, and she was in different bands, and we were in different bands, and we'd go and watch each other play. In the very beginning of the band, I was living in Houston, playing music with another group that was starting to break up. Marty and Emmy had been uh, playing in kind of a children's band. And I guess we just had a lot of good response, and we started, people started saying, well, do you have a mailing list? We want to know when you're playing, so we'd have... 50 and then 100 and then 150 names. We've got $5,000 mailing list now. Of course, the Dallas and the North Texas fans have been so loyal, and we always love coming home. I've been recognized a few times, but I was in Neiman's at the cosmetic counter. I got recognized last night. <laughs> and I looked so bad that day. And it's kind of fun. Lady said kind of loud, aren't you one of the Dixie Chicks? And all these heads turned around and looked at me. And I said, yes. And they started clapping. <laughs> All the ladies around the counter started clapping. I was so embarrassed. I looked so terrible that day. The visibility is, um, I don't know. I think sometimes it's hard, it's hard to say. I've had, you know, I've, I've had scares. I've had weird things happen. Uh, I did have my phone number unlisted. I've had peeping toms before. My mom wanted me to play cello. I actually threatened to want to play saxophone. <laughs> and uh, she said no. My mom played violin. And she gave me her first violin and started me on Suzuki lessons. Then when I was 12, my dad gave me fiddle lessons for my birthday. Marty really took to it so naturally that she stayed with it. It was up to her to do the practicing and up to her to learn the music. The best part about being in the Dixie Chicks is getting to play music. Road trip! And travel around the country with my sister. Maybe wrote a song. It's fun on the road. She's peeping at my original works that aren't done yet. <laughs> no jets yet. We're uh, still in our pink RV. And that was a big selling point for us. Uh, the girls went shopping that day. <laughs> no, then we go play the New Year's Eve thing. The road life is the hardest part of this oh, business. You that. get totally off schedule. Playing late and sleeping late, traveling 20 hours in a day is, it can be really taxing. You know, we have long drives between cities. There's a lot of time to create and brainstorm with everybody in the band. We had a Matthew Benjamin, a great guitar player. I mean, he's just incredible. And our drummer, Tom Van Skyke, who's always there, he's our rock. <laughs> Jeff Humphrey is our incredible road manager and sound engineer. Now, this will be for our April thing. I got us a gig in Denver. The guy grew up in Dell City, and he opened a bar in Denver, and it's going great. This is a big DC on here, this letter jacket. This is about maybe 20 years old or so. Uh, it doesn't stand for Dixie Chicks, it stands for Dell City. The booming, bustling metropolis of Dell City, Texas. And here's where we find out what's going on. Laura, meet me at Rosita's at 11. Well, we're right now at the one paved intersection in Dell City. Every now and then there's a message on there that, pretty personal, you know. I'm sorry I threw you out last night, Bubba. <laughs> this rush hour. You very rarely see this. I want you to get this on film. You got somebody at this point in the road, and here comes somebody else. 
The traffic is just awful around here. <laughs> this has been my playground my whole life. All this wide open space, all this beautiful big sky, and it's just home. Look at this little baby. Isn't that beautiful? Look how young he is. I'm on about eight out of here. How many was that, five? There's your... <laughs> Six, seven. There it goes. Out on the plains, down near Santa Fe. I met a cowboy riding the range one day. Singing his cow cow boogie in the strangest way. Come a tie, come a tie, booty. When the lights go out at the end of the day, there's not anything but the stars and you. It's so beautiful. Well, when John Ames wrote West Texas Wind, I'm sure he was somewhere right around where we are. And he wrote, it's a long, thin line. It sure is a hot and dusty day. And Colorado is more than 800 miles away. West Texas Wind, well, tell me why you try. What should we open with, y'all? What about whistles? What about whistles? I don't know. I like starting with whistles. Like, I'd love to put Midnight Highway after West Texas, because she's on banjo for both those songs. believe I'm doing what I want to do you know not many people get to do that especially at my age sometimes I feel like I need to validate what I'm doing it's sometimes hard to say that I never finished college to tell people you know because that's one of the first questions your old classmates ask you know where'd you go to school It'd be cool if we could find a song about sisters if we could write one or called Give me back that shirt you borrowed. <laughs> you owe me a can of Aquanet. <laughs> well, not uh because I bought your Big Mac. Remember, we used to go, but then I bought that thing that was a quarter. I know, but I, <laughs> but I paid you back because you asked for some gum that day. <laughs> Usually when we pull in for a gig, we first unload and set up. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to welcome y'all to La Santa Rosa and tell y'all a few things about the band. Y'all ready? They've just released an album. They have got a, a song that is headed towards the top of the charts. And it's a great pleasure for me to introduce the Dixie Chicks and welcome them to La Santa Rosa. How about a big hand for them? say that even when we're 70, 80 years old, we're going to be jamming together. We don't care where we can get a gig. Even if it's on, back on the street corner, we're going to call ourselves the Dixie Biddies. <laughs> Soon more folks will be learning about and perhaps learning to love the music of the Dixie Chicks. The group is going on its first ever European tour next month.